see how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, you, the head, you conquer the grave. You free every cast, break every chain. Oh, I, you have done great. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Not sorry. I'm not sorry. I am so glad y'all are here today, and I've missed being with y'all. I've been gone for a few weeks, and I'm back, and I'm so happy. I know. Woo, woo. Back in Texas, I was in New Zealand down under. So, um, yeah, I could talk on and on about that, but I won't because there's a really awesome sermon for you guys today. So, um, but we can talk about it later. Just let me know. We'll have a chat. Um, anyways, welcome. So glad that you're here. I'm glad that you got up and got yourself here however it was. So welcome to those of you in person, and definitely also welcome to those of you who are joining us online, whether you're live right now or re-watching. We're just glad that you're here. And if this is your first time, or maybe you've come a couple of times and you're our our guest, and you haven't given us your information, we would really love to have that. And so there's a way to do that. You can, in a bulletin, hopefully you picked one up, or someone handed you one either way when you walked in. And in the back of that bulletin, there's just a little section that little, that's perforated. You can tear it off. There's a place for you to put your information on there. Um, we call it our connection card. And you can take it to the coffee bar if you haven't done that. We have a gift for you. I think we still have some back there. I haven't checked. Anyways, hopefully we have a gift for you because that would be, like, so disappointing now that I said that. Um, and then also um, you can drop it into the uh, little church house, your little card in there. And that connection card is also a way for all of us to connect through prayer. Um, if you have a prayer request and you would like for our pastor to pray for you, uh, you can fill that prayer request out on that same perforated section. Drop it in the little church house in the foyer, and he gathers those and prays for us each week. Thank you, Pastor Joe, for doing that. So we appreciate your prayers, and we need to be praying for each other, y'all. Even if you're not using the cards, 
We can't do this without that. That's our weapon. That's one of our big weapons that we have, praying for each other and, and just being there for each other as a church body. So, so anyways, take advantage of those opportunities. Also, um, there are a few ways that you can share your tithes and offerings. We have, I think, four ways now, maybe five since I've been gone. Y'all may have come up with another one, but you can, you can text it to text to tithe 84321. Um, we have boxes on the wall that you can uh, place it in there. There's some out in the foyer. You can also get online and do that through our website. Oh, you can mail a check. Snail mail. Yeah, we still have that available. And we have also um, the QR code which I think is our most uh, recent thing that we've added. So you can use the QR code. So lots of choices for you to share what God has, has given you and blessed you with. And, uh, and I just love that we can do that too. We can help each other through that, not prayer, but also through sharing our tithes and offerings. All right, so I have several things to tell you about, remind you about. I think you've heard most of them. But next week is a really special week. Um, we are having our sunrise service. It is next week, right? Okay. All of a sudden, I had like a, oh, maybe it's not next week. I'm still still like a day or two behind. I don't know. Um, anyways, it's next week, and we'll have that sunrise service out at the church property. Um, so there would love for you to bring some lilies with you out there to have set of browns. Um, they're wanting Easter lilies. And then you can take them home and decorate your house with them after that. So if you would like to bring some, they would love for you to do that. Um, and then we are coming back here. Um, no, 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 before that, there's an Easter egg hunt. Yeah, we got an Easter egg hunt for the kids. I believe it's at 930. Nine, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we may have to sit, give this job back to Amy. Um, at 9 o'clock, 9 to 1030 um, right here. So um, Nellen is going to be stuffing eggs, and um, there's a stuffing egg party on Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Six o'clock? Okay. Thank you. It's group effort, y'all. This, this announcement, group effort. So Wednesday at six o'clock, uh, she would love to have some help with stuffing the Easter eggs. And we also, after that, same day, we're going to have our service here at 1045. So, I mean, that's going to be a fun day, a really great day to celebrate the best news ever that Jesus is risen because y'all we wouldn't have any hope in this world if he hadn't risen so let's you really take advantage of all the things for that day and just celebrate Jesus our savior okay also um there is a women's event coming up um um mm -hmm. yep it's in your bulletin and we have a slide <laughs> So attention to the slide. Um, it's on April the 14th, 2 to 5 p.m. Cost is $10. Child care is provided. So if you're interested in that, that's an opportunity for the ladies coming up. And the right after that, the following weekend, I feel like my days are all mixed up. On the 19th, y'all heard about SoGo yet? I hear about SoGo. I love that. I love that name. SoGo, Southern Oaks, God Outdoors. I think Bojack had been talking to you about that. That is coming up on the 19th. And there are a, still a few spots available. If you haven't already spoken with Bojack about that, um, we're going camping. Some people are using their tents. Some people are getting a cabin um, or their RV. And we're going to just really um, get to know each other. We're trying to find ways to get to know each other as a church body and to just kind of disconnect for a little bit. And so that weekend is going to be so fun. Um, Bojack did tell me that he sent an email out to anyone he's already talked to. So if you did get that email, if you wouldn't mind just responding if you haven't already so that he knows that you got it and it didn't go to your junk mail. So we don't, he'll be so sad, y'all. If y'all don't respond, he'll think nobody loves him. So respond, let him know that you got it. And that's a way for you to connect with him about that weekend. And he also um, is going to be available right after the service up front for anyone who's ready to make their payment or has more questions or just wants to know more about it. So that is coming up as well. So go. I just like saying that. So go. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, so if you didn't hear that, registration is now open online for the ladies' event that I talked about a minute ago that's up on the screen right now. So that's available right now. And also, I just have to give a shout-out to the youth because I was here last night for the mystery dinner, and it was really good. They did a great job. We had some really yummy dinner and silent auction, 
and I'm really excited about all the participation in that so that they can go to Glorietta this summer. So I just wanted y'all to let you know it was a good time, and if you missed it, sorry, you missed it. You should have marked your calendar like, you, like we asked you to. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I'm sorry. I'm a little spicy today. All right. Um, I think that's it. Anybody else that needs announcements that told me that I forgot about? All right, would you guys please stand up, say hello to people around you, visit for just a few minutes as we uh, get ready for our children's sermon. Plant, yes. Are y'all ready? If I say good morning, boys and girls, are y'all ready to say good morning, Pastor Joe? Y'all ready? Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. I am so glad y'all are here. It was so neat watching y'all have little huddles of kids over in the different areas of the church. Y'all know each other and love each other and you're getting to know each other better. I'm so glad that y'all are here. Do y'all know what special day next Sunday is? What? Easter. Easter. And what is Easter about? Yes. Yes. When Jesus died on the cross on Friday, we call that Good Friday, and then on Sunday, what happened? He rose again. He rose again from the grave, uh uh-huh. And so, so death did not hold him down. He, He conquered death. We call it Good Friday because he was so good to die for us and our sins on Friday. Now, today is the Sunday before Easter, and we have a special name for this Sunday. Do you all know what it is? It's not as, it's not as well known as next Sunday. This Sunday is called Palm Sunday. Now, do you know why it's called Palm Sunday? Well, I'm so glad that I get to tell you. You see, oftentimes when somebody very, very important would come into a town, especially like a king would come into a town, then everybody would go out. Let's just pretend for a moment that somebody super, super famous came to Kerrville and everybody wanted to go out to the road where he was coming in. Well, sometimes people might wave a flag in our day and time, but in that day and time they would cut off a palm branch. And they would wave the palm branch. And do you see this thing right here? This is a palm tree. Now, there are lots of different varieties of palm trees. But generally, a palm tree has a main trunk and then what they call, they call fingers. These little leaves right here, they're kind of like fingers. And so, what? raise your fingers up in the air for a moment, okay? Now, what holds your fingers together? My palm. Your palm. And so these are called palm trees because their fingers point up to God and they expose their palms. And do you know that there are several verses in the Bible in the Old Testament that talks about when God returns to earth in his glory that the whole earth and nature will sing and the trees will sing and the mountains will sing and that the trees, look at this, Look at this. They take their hands, their palms, their fingers, and the trees 
will applaud God's coming. So, because this Sunday is called Palm Sunday, because Jesus entered into Jerusalem the week before he was going to take his throne in heaven, he entered into Jerusalem as a king, and everybody waved palms. And let's just pretend for a moment, pretend for real, that God is here, and he's coming, and we don't have palm trees, but we've got palms and fingers. So let's give God an applause for coming. Everybody, isn't that awesome? He is here, but it just helps our imagination to kind of picture him coming in. So dear Lord Jesus, thank you for coming here this morning. Thank you, Lord, for promising us that where two or more are gathered in your name to worship you and to proclaim your holiness and exalt you, Father, that you show up in your glory. Thank you, Father, for these children. We pray, Father, that our church will always be the place where they can learn more about you, but not just about you, but that they can learn to love you and to follow you. We pray your blessing and anointing on these children. And we thank you, Father, for all that you have done for us. This week, Lord, this holy week, in the church calendar, we pray, Father, that you will prepare our hearts to receive you as our King. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all can go to Children's Church or sit with your folks. One more uh, announcement. At the sunrise service, it is a privilege that we have had for many years to, uh, to do river baptisms. And so if you would like to uh, either affirm your faith for the first time by baptism or to renew your faith, I would love to baptize you this coming uh, Sunday right immediately after the sunrise service. You just need to let me know if you will, and we can talk about uh, what you'll need to bring. Thank you. Let's worship. Good morning. We're so glad you're all here today. Now will you please stand and join us in worship. From the darkness, I called your name into darkness. Your mercy came. You called me out. You lifted me up. How great is your Your presence 
so true there's never been there will never be a god like you a love so true there's never been
you hear your children now you are the same god you are the same god you answered prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same god you are the same god you are providing then you are providing now you are the same god you are the same god you moved in power then god move in power now you are the same god you are the same god you were a healer then you are a healer now you are the same god you are the same god you were a savior then you are a savior now you are the same god you are the same god oh god my god i need you oh god my god i need you now how i need you now oh, oh rock the oh, rock of ages i'm standing on your faithfulness your faithfulness oh god my god i need you oh god my god i need you now how i need you now oh rock the oh, rock of ages i'm standing on your faithfulness
built or before you. You silence the boast of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival. You have no equal. is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name of all men. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, what a powerful name it is. Uh, we thank you so much that we can come together and lift you up this morning and feel your presence and connect with you and just worship you for who you are with, with our brothers and sisters in Christ here. I pray that now today you would not allow us to leave without absorbing this message that you've prepared on my dad's heart. I pray that you would uh, let us be intent and uh, let, us, let us hear it and let us take it to heart and then prepare our hearts throughout the week as we move into um, this celebration mindset for the victory that uh, the next Sunday represents. And I pray that you would just uh, change us now. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you, praise team. I'm glad to be back. Uh, last uh, Sunday, if you were here, you knew that I wasn't. I had prepared a message and wanted to preach it, and the title of the message was Fighting with God. And I think that if you are going to be a Christ follower and be genuine and sincere, there's going to be a point in your life at some point where you struggle and fight with, with God, what, either what he's asking you or, or why he didn't answer a prayer. There's, a, there's going to come a time when you're fighting with God and I wanted to preach that this Sunday, except this is Palm Sunday, and I kind of thought, well, so that'll be probably the Sunday after Easter, but today I do want to talk about Palm Sunday. Um, last Sunday, I was on my knees <laughs> praying, <laughs> desperately praying, <laughs> so thank you for uh uh, your prayers for me, and thank you, Robbie Carpenter. He's in the early service, but thank you, Robbie Carpenter. I heard he did an excellent job. So good job. it's good to have other pastors in church that can step up to the plate. When I was about nine years old, it's hard for me to remember that far back, either eight, nine, or ten, somewhere in that. Uh, there was a guy in San Antonio that owned a funeral home. His name was Roy Akers. He had Roy Akers Funeral Home. He also owned a boys camp, Roy Akers Boys Camp. And I don't even know much about the fact as to why the camp was going on, but my dad took me and there was a Tom Sawyer look-alike contest that my dad entered me in. And there were about seven boys that were called up front that were dressed supposedly like Tom Sawyer. My dad was pretty creative. Um, he had me barefoot with uh, ratty blue jeans that were frayed at the knees and a, a rope for a belt, flannel shirt, and I had a, he put a straw hat. And, um, but to top it off, he had a fishing pole. He went to the fish market and bought a bass, a largemouth bass, that was about a third of my body height, 
and it still had the head on it. He hooked it and had a cane pole and had me stand up in front of everybody um, with all these other kids up there. Well, the way the camp director determined who was the winner, he would walk up and down putting his hand over the boys' heads, and whichever uh, solicited the largest applause from the audience was determined the winner. And your pastor at the age of 9 or 10 outshined everybody else, and I won the Tom Sawyer Lookalike Contest at Roy Akers Boys Camp. Yeah, go ahead. Give it up for me. I'm still working on it. So, um, but I won something, and I'll tell you, what, what did you win, Pastor? I won a donkey, a little burrow donkey that had never been ridden before, cutest little thing. My dad loaded it up in somebody's borrowed trailer, and he brought it to our house. We lived two houses from Trinity University, had a alleyway in the back behind the backyard there was a rock wall separating the alley from our house and a rock wall separating the alley from the people that live behind us who happened to be uh, one of the co-workers of my dad his name was Russ Gossage and he lived in a little garage apartment there behind the alley and my dad came up with the idea of barricading both ends of the alley and putting the donkey there because we had to figure out what we were going to do with it. And at 6 a.m. in the morning, Russ Gossage um, had never been awakened by the braying of a donkey before. But that morning, he said he hit the floor so afraid because... (laughs) So um, I tried to ride that donkey in my backyard, and this donkey had never been ridden before. Now, I didn't have a lot of weight putting myself on that donkey, but um, I'm holding on to the mane, and no saddle, no bridle, but I am riding this donkey, and it sees a limb that is low enough to knock me off, and it takes advantage of that, and I wound up in the tree, which is better than winding up on the ground. So uh, that's my donkey story, but there's another donkey story that I want to tell you about. It's written in all four Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's about when our Lord and Savior rode a donkey that had never been ridden before. And that's a miracle in itself because um, animals that have never been ridden before usually uh, rebel at their rider. Um, we had a horse at one point in time at our small place between Sisterdale and Lukenbach, and we paid somebody to try to break it, and I tried to ride it, and one day we, me on the horse, we went, and there was a cedar tree that had blown over, and just because the cedar tree was laying down and was not normally in its normal place, that horse horse started bucking because it did not want to go near something. So when you take a donkey that has never been ridden before, you put coats on it, you put a grown man on it, and then you start laying coats in front like a red carpet entrance, and you get people waving palm branches and singing and shouting, for that donkey to submit to that kind of thing is a miracle in and of itself. It was almost as if that donkey was created for that very purpose. And there is a legend that says that that particular donkey has a cross on its back, and it's the only animal God created with a cross on its back. Um, I want to read this morning the four different accounts. and I know that's always dangerous when you read too much because somebody can kind of check out mentally, but I I hope and pray that you will stay with me this morning because as I studied for today's message, I learned something about Palm Sunday that I had never learned before, and it's really moved me emotionally, and I want to share it with you. So let's begin. Mark chapter 11. As they approached Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, keep that in mind. 
As Jesus approached Jerusalem near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you. Immediately as you enter that village, you'll find a colt tied there on which no one yet has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anybody says to you, why are you doing this? You say the Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it back here. So they went away. They found a colt tied at the door outside in the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders were saying to them, what are you doing untying that colt? Well, they spoke to them just as Jesus told them, and they gave them permission. So they brought the colt to Jesus. They put their coats on it. He sat on it. Many spread their coats in the road. Others spread leafy branches, which they had cut from the fields. Those who went in front and those who followed were shouting. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed... Come Read it with me. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. What does Hosanna mean? Literally, it means Lord save us or Lord deliver us or in colloquial English, help us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. Well, in Matthew's account, chapter 21, it says that when they had approached Jerusalem and had come to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, remember that, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. Now, if anybody says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. Immediately, he will send them. Now, this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. Well, the disciples went and did just as Jesus had told them. He brought and they brought the donkey and the colt. They laid their coats on them, and he sat on the coats. Most of the crowd spread their coats in the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them in the road. And the crowds going ahead of him and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Remember that, the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Well, when he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred saying, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, Well, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. I lost my place. Here we go. Zechariah... Chapter 9, verse 9, is the scripture that is being fulfilled at this point. This verse says in Zechariah, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Okay, before I read the other two accounts of the Gospels, I want to give you a little bit of a background here. Why in the world um, did Jesus walk everywhere he goes except in this situation he rides a donkey? Now, we don't know for sure. He, maybe he rode a donkey some other time, but it's never recorded. We do know that he was riding a donkey when he was in his mama's womb as she rode to Bethlehem. But other than that, we have no knowledge of Jesus ever being on a donkey. So why now? Do you remember where many times Jesus would either deliver someone of a demon or he would heal them and then he would say, don't tell anybody because my time has not yet come. In fact, when Jesus delivered demons out of the demoniac that had a legion of demons 
The demons themselves knew who Jesus was, but he sent them into a herd of swine, and they drowned in the river. When, when Jesus um, was walking and the two blind men cried out, they said, Son of David, have mercy on us. Why did they know that he was a son of David? You see, because the Messiah was prophesied as being in the lineage of David. But here's something else that's pretty interesting. When a king would come into a town to conquer it, he would ride a white horse. But some kings would go to their coronation not riding a horse. You see, David had many children, but he had one son that was known for his wisdom. Do you remember his name? Solomon. When David was about to die, he passed the kingship on to his son Solomon. And when Solomon went to his coronation, Solomon, the son of David, went to receive his crown riding on a donkey. Now... Here in Zechariah, it is prophesied that a day is coming when the Messiah will enter into Jerusalem and he will ride a donkey and he will receive his kingship. So up until this time, Jesus says, don't tell anybody, be quiet. He keeps it down, but now he's saying the time has come. God is revealing about what he is going to do, and he is going to reveal who I am. Who is this man? Well, isn't he the prophet from Galilee? Who is he? Jesus wants everybody to know who he is. So the way he enters, at the time he enters, the beginning of the Passover week, when the lamb would be chosen to be slain for Passover... Jesus enters what we call the holy city on holy day of Palm Sunday. Now, in John chapter 12, it says this. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he'd raised from the dead. Okay, I just said that real fast. Your brain hadn't caught up yet. Let me, let me slow it down. Let me paint a bigger picture. The previous week, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus healed like nobody healed. Jesus raised people from the dead. Jesus performed miracles that nobody else had performed. Jesus, who is he? Could he be the Messiah? Could he be the one that we have longed for? And so now he enters Jerusalem riding on a donkey, on the foal of a donkey that has never been ridden before. Now you see, oftentimes when an animal was chosen for sacred use, the qualification would be that that animal had never carried an oxen before. Or that that particular animal had never had any burden put upon him before. It was a sacred animal for a sacred purpose because God is fixing to do a special sacrifice. Now, John 12 again. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there. Where? Coming into Jerusalem. And so this large crowd of Jews came... Not only because of Jesus, but they also wanted to see Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead just the week before. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of Lazarus, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. So they planned to kill Lazarus as well. I can just hear the conversation. Lazarus? If you don't stop telling everybody about Jesus, we're going to kill you. Been there? Done that? <laughs> so the next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. So they took palm branches and they went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna! 
Lord, save us. Save us from what? Deliver us from what? What most people wanted was for a Savior to deliver them from Rome. From a bad government. That's not why Jesus came. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Verse 14 says, Jesus found a young donkey. He sat upon it as it is written. Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. Well, at first, his disciples didn't understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified, did they realize the, these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him, when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead, they continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, they went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Now, there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. Let me, let me give you a little background there. There were some Greeks. That means that they were not Jews. You have Jews and you have non-Jews. Another way of saying it would be Gentiles, except they, these Gentiles were from the Greek area. So they were called Greeks. There were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. Which feast? Passover. They came to Jerusalem to worship God on Passover. They weren't Jews, but they believed in the one true God. They were part of God's family. And they came to worship God at the feast of Passover. Now I'm telling you this because it's going to play a role in the and what you're fixing to hear in the future. There were some Greeks among them who went up to worship at the feast, and they came to Philip, one of the apostles. Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. And Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be I tell you the truth, that unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Last gospel, Luke chapter 19. Jesus approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives. Remember that. He sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you will enter it, you will find a colt there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anybody asks you, why are you untying it? Just tell them the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as Jesus told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they replied, the Lord needs it. Well, they brought it to Jesus. They threw their cloaks on the colt, put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Well, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, 
rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. So as he approached Jerusalem and he saw the city, Jesus stops and he weeps. And he says, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it's hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. He's prophesying about the fall of the destruction of Jerusalem in A.D. 70. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Well, then Jesus entered the temple area. And he began driving out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers or a den of thieves. Okay, I made a big point of the fact who the Greeks were. They came to Passover to worship. Let me describe to you how the, the Jewish temple was constructed on the very inner part, the very inner of the temple, is a place called the Holy of Holies. And that is where the very presence of God was known to be. And only one person was ever allowed to go behind the curtain into the Holy of Holies, and that was the high priest. And he would go in once a year and he would take in a sacrifice for the sins of the people, and he would take in a sacrifice for his own sins. What they would do is they would tie a rope around his ankle with some bells on it, and he would go in, and the rope around his ankles was just in case he had a heart attack or saw an angel and passed out or something, and you can't leave him there until next uh, Passover, you've got to be able to get him out, but nobody can go in there to get him. So they devised this plan to have a rope tied around, and the bells were, you would listen to see if the bells stopped moving. I guess he's dead. You tug the rope, and you pull him out. So that's the holy of holies. And then you would have the holy place for the priests, and then you would have the court of priests and the court of men and then the court of Jewish women. And on the very outside, you would have the court of the Gentiles. The court of the Gentiles was where the whole world who were not Jewish would come and worship the one true God. They were invited to come into the temple, the court of the Gentiles, to worship God. But the Gentiles are not that many. They're not that important. And who really, I mean, have you seen many of them lately? Well, a few of them came to ask if they could see Jesus. They came to Jerusalem. But where was their place to worship God? It's not that important according to the Jewish Pharisees and the Sadducees. So what they did was they set up in the outer court, the court that was supposed to be a place for all the nations to, to gather in prayer. That was where they set up their tables to exchange money um, because when you were going to make an offering, you couldn't do it with Greek money. You had to do it with temple money. And the exchange rate was pretty high there. So... Then you would want to bring a sacrifice like a lamb or a goat or some chickens or some turtle doves. So you're bringing a sacrifice, but you had to have priests that would certify that it was a good sacrifice and it was unblemished and it was okay. You would have a priest certify this is a good sacrifice because you don't want to bring a a sick animal to sacrifice. You want to bring God your very best. And so people would come for miles and miles around and they bring their sacrifice once a year to celebrate 
the Passover and to bring an offering to the God they loved and worshipped. And the priest would determine if the sacrifice was without blemish. And 99 times out of 100, it wasn't good enough. But we've got a deal for you. If you will trade your sacrifice in and upgrade on a newer model, we will certify for just a few bucks more that this sacrifice has got the certification of the priests. Well, you would make the trade. And then as you turned your sacrifice, sacrificial animal in, it would go back around and could somehow get unblemished and be resold to the next group. It was a scam. It was the way for the priest to make money. It had been done so long that everybody just shrugged their shoulders. It is just the way it is. Now, I got to tell you, about an Old Testament book called Ezekiel. You, you need to know this. In the Old Testament book called Ezekiel, there is some prophetic language and stories about, about how God withdrew his spirit from the temple multiple times in the Old Testament. But one time in Ezekiel chapter 10, it describes something pretty special. It says that, the, the temple and the priesthood had become profane. It, it's like, you don't need to worry about sin and just kind of turn, turn temple worship into just a normal habit. It's no big deal. It's just the way of life. You're not going there to find God. You, you know, God's already here. You're just trying to do your religious duties. And the priests themselves were full of pride, selfishness, and sin. And nobody cared. And, and the glory that had been present in the temple was diminishing. So much so that God, who's a holy God, can't stand sin. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 10 that God withdrew his spirit from the temple. But then this is what blew me away. When God withdrew his spirit, in my mind, when it, if, if it were to say that God's spirit departed, I would just kind of feel like it just kind of fizzled and went just gone. But that's not what Ezekiel 10 says. It says that God's spirit departed from the temple and went out the eastern gate of the city. And then went to the Mount of Olives. And then departed to the throne of God. Now, now that's kind of weird. Don't quite comprehend that. Until you realize that the glory had departed. And it was no longer a temple. It was just a building bricks and stones it's kind of like when you go to europe and you see these magnificent cathedrals they're beautiful stained glass everywhere ornate architecture it is amazing except it's not a church anymore it's a museum because the spirit of god has departed But what you've got to realize is this, is that when Jesus chooses to ride the donkey in fulfillment of the prophecy that the king is coming to Jerusalem, he comes from the Mount of Olives into the eastern gate to the eastern door of the temple and comes into the temple and what does he do? He cleanses the temple. But he doesn't receive his crown. Until he goes before Pilate. And they put a crown on our Lord. 
And then they place him on the cross. And then he takes his seat at the throne of God. And then he says, my temple is my people. You are the temple of God. Don't you know? You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And in the last part of Ezekiel, it says that when he returns to fill his temple, he does it like the sound of a rushing wind, which took place at Pentecost when God poured out his spirit on his people. So, I wanted to preach this Sunday about fighting with God, but you know, I, I, knew, I knew I had to wait on that. So, I've had a rough week being kind of pale and puny. And so, uh, sometimes when God is just, it's just not coming together, I try to get inspired by listening to a lot of other preachers preach God's word. And, and on, you know, on YouTube, there are just hundreds and hundreds of preachers that you can listen to in services. And so... I just started clicking and just clicking and listening and listening. And I just saw so many preachers who have perfect hairdos. <laughs> and some of them are in tight buff t-shirts. And they look like rock stars. And, and everything is, the performance is so magnificent and so good. And, and now, you got you to understand where I'm coming from. I didn't feel good. Still don't. I'm not back up to par yet, okay? I don't know about you, but when I don't feel good, there's a filter that it's hard for. I remember one Sunday years ago when I was puny and I preached two services and I had to go with a group of people to Mama Cita's and, and I, was just, I wanted to go home and go to bed. And the waitress comes over. She goes, hi, how are you today? Can I take your order? And I just wanted to say, shut up and leave me alone. She was sweet. I was just feeling bad. So feeling bad all week, I understand that I, that was a filter in hearing these messages. I'm sure they were godly people that just happened to look so good. <laughs> Never, never trust a faith healer who's bald. That's all I got to say. So uh, as I'm listening to the, I'm just, I'm thinking about the presence and the glory of God. You see, it's not the bricks and the mortar and the stones. It's where the presence of God is. And when the Greeks come to Philip and say, we want to see Jesus. The rest of the world wants to see Jesus. And if the church, the followers of Christ, if, if we just take sin so lackadaisical, and if the church in America elevates global warming over killing babies, or saying some word as opposed to using God's holy name in vain. Well, it's no big deal. It's, I mean, if, do you know why those who greeted Jesus on Palm Sunday with praise and applause, many of them were the same ones who just a few days later on Friday said, crucify him. Crucify him. How in the world can, can there be such a change in just a few days? Well, let me give you a suggestion. Could it be that it's because he wasn't the kind of king they expected? Could it be that he was not the applause king, the rock star king, the one who was going to get Rome out of there? Could it be they didn't want a spiritual king that would want to deliver them from sin? They just wanted to be delivered from inconvenience in Rome. Have you not heard in our country that people want a god that will make their life more comfortable and more prosperous 
rather than a God who is holy and wants us to die to our sins and to follow him and take up our cross and become his servant? Is it possible that the church of Jesus Christ might still need a message of repentance? Is it possible that God is still holy and he's sitting on his throne and the very reason he sent his son was to wash and deliver us from our sins? Not that we can waller in them. Now, I'm not trying to promote that there's no joy. I'm talking about there is joy. There's joy in being cleansed. There's joy in knowing that God loves you and he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you and he'll hold your hand no matter where you go and he will walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. But you see, what God wants is a relationship with his people, not a religion. And what the Pharisees wanted was just a religion where they were in charge. So everybody's happy with their God if they get to decide what their God likes and doesn't like. So church family, I see in the passage of Passover and Palm Sunday, the Lamb of God who was chosen to be slain, he comes from the Mount of Olives through the eastern gate and he comes to the temple where his spirit does not reside. So then he goes and receives his crown and he gets up on the cross and now he is seated at the right hand of God and he, the curtain in the temple is torn in two and he invites everybody to come. So what is your response? Who is this Jesus? Is he just a prophet? Is he just a teacher? Is he just a healer? Or is he the Lord of lords and the King of kings? Is he the great I am who at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue will confess because there is no other name given among men by which we can be saved? I tell you, when Jesus enters your heart to be king, even the trees will stand in applause and the hills will sing, the Lord is coming and the Lord is here. Let's stand and let's give him our praise. <laughs> praise team, come on up. Let's worship his mighty name. We we're going to have some prayer partners around the back wall if you would like to pray with any of our prayer team. Thank you.
next Sunday, 7 a.m. at the uh, River property, a sunrise service. And if you haven't driven by there lately, our, our trucking company, J3, has smoothed all of that out for us. It's absolutely beautiful. It's there, the big, tall Cedar Cross. You'll, it's right there on Bandera Highway. Um, I want to ask you to do me a favor. Um, if you don't absolutely have plans after the sunrise service, uh, please come to the 1045 service here. It will be a different sermon. And, um, and the reason I ask you to do that is because last year we had more at the river and less in this building for the second service. And it was a shock. It's the first time in my many years of ministry here that we weren't busting at the seams on Easter Sunday year, so it was just like, what happened? Well, everybody went to the early service and didn't show up for the second service. So if you don't have other plans and you can join us for the second service, please do that. Otherwise, I'll see you at both next Sunday. Thank you for worshiping with us. Father, in Jesus' name, you're an awesome God. Lord, there is so much that we don't know about your word and how you fulfill things. But what we do know is, is you're an awesome God and we want to follow you. Thank you, Lord, for our church family. In Jesus' name, amen.